Arch. Boy, what a huge throw that was there by Jackson Schmidt. Now Arch going for two. De up now 12 to 7, trying to get the point they lost earlier. Here's the toss going wide. It's Wilson coming up the middle, and he'll dive into the end zone for two. Peyton Wilson scores the two point play, and the grandstand that is dead full to the far end of the field erupts. And the Panthers have a 14 to 7 lead with 9.08 remaining here in the first half. And you're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. The Carolina Hilltopper Lacrosse Program is a proud sponsor of HillsboroughSports.com. They've been teaching the game of lacrosse to young men in Orange County for over six years with great results for many players who enjoy successful high school and collegiate careers. 49 players have played with the Hilltopper Lacrosse Program, then gone on to play at NCAA schools in the last five years alone. If you want to play select lacrosse with veteran coaches, check out HilltopperLAX.com and register for the upcoming fall season. How about an 18, 20 yard run? So Orange with a huge drive that goes 67 yards. A couple of big runs, one by Marvante Beasley, another by Peyton Wilson, and it ends with a 27 yard touchdown pass. Schmidt to Cody Evans. And now Francisco McKinley on a squib kick. Fair catch called for. That's a free ball. And the ball is down at the 35. There was an Orange player who actually ran right past the ball. He ran right past it, not realizing that ball was free. If he dives on it, Southern, for whatever reason, was reluctant to dive on it. And if he winds up falling on that ball, the Panthers could have had a double whammy go against Southern, but didn't work out that way. Southern's got it at its own 35. Well, Jeff, that's one of those things. If you're not secure about your your, your kicking game, you do a lot of pooch kickers. Number one, you hope that the that as they did there, they don't receive the ball. The second thing is you make an up backfield. He's not used to catching the ball. He's not usually as athletic or fast. We gets your coverage team a little bit better job to stop the run. Orange now up 14-7. Green will send a man in motion, and he's going to throw it. Looking, looking, looking. Pocket collapses on him. Green has to reverse. The pursuit clamping down on him. He'll roll out to the near side, throws, and it's nearly picked off. It was knocked away from the side because Sean Thompson is playing a tremendous game. He gets the knock Green away, sending away from for Montreal Cooper. And, Jeff, one thing that's impressing me about the Orange DBs tonight is typically Southern is a lot more athletic than most of the teams they play, especially in the Big A Conference. But the few times that they've thrown the football, the Orange DBs have been hip-to-hip -hip with them, and you don't see that a lot. A lot of times no. they're able to create that separation, whether it's vertically, horizontally, with double moves or whatever. But you got to give a lot of credit. There again, they have a lot of time to create the passing lane, but you got great coverage. Jalen all of a sudden gets happy feet, has a scramble, and a great job by the secondary of the Panthers. Rodney Brooks, Alex Long, and Sean Thompson have played a whale of a game. Handoff now. It's Green pulling back on a zone read, but this time Orange is ready for it. And he is hauled to the turf by Noah Rogers after a gain of just one. Green ran around right in. That play worked on the second drive of the night for Southern. Didn't work on that play. Third down and nine. And we talked about I'm not really sure why Southern hasn't gone back to that zone read. There's a difference when you run it on first down and, and you kind of have the momentum going your way. But when all of a sudden you throw the ball on first down and you kind of get in that situation, you give the defense the advantage because they can now sit back and kind of adjust things and say, hey, we can watch out for the zone read on this play. So it'll be interesting to see third and eight, what they dial up here. It'll be Green, and he's struggling to get the play call, and they're going to have to call a timeout. Look like that Green and Santonio Marshall were arguing, and it's going to be third and nine, and we're going to do a break. You're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. <laughs> Angie, your purse looks great. Where did you get it embroidered? Oh, thanks. My family got it for me at Happy Stitches in Hillsboro. It was a surprise for my birthday. It looks so professional. Does Happy Stitches do only purses? No, they monogram t-shirts, bags, stickers, coolers, beach bags, magnets, even Christmas ornaments. You name it, they do it. Perfect. With the holidays coming up, I've been looking for something for my Christmas tree. I'll visit Happy Stitches today. Happy Stitches, located in the Daniel Boone Village. Call Wendy Allison at 919 64 8455. Jeff Hamlin, Chris Casey here with you tonight, and it's Orange leading Southern Durham 14 to 7, 816 remaining here in the first half. 
Southern has a third down and nine from its own 36-yard line. Orange fans making some noise far into the field. Green from the shotgun with Joey Strong to his right will step back to pass. Orange with a blitz, and here's a dump off over, and it is tipped and incomplete. Throw was just too high for Tariq Burris, and we've got a hold called against Southern. And Orange will de most certainly decline that one, and we'll have a fourth down, and Orange has fought back to gain momentum in this game. And, Jeff, they had him wide open there. Rodney Brooks was on the coverage, giving him a little bit of cushion. If the ball had been on target, it's probably a first down right there. Orange, I guess, in, in passing situations, they went to a cover one, which basically means you're going to lock up man-to-man -man with all their receivers, and you have a safety sitting over the top. And you usually want to funnel things into that safety. You know you got help in the middle of the field. So he's kind of sitting there. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. Wherever the quarterback looks, that's where he's going with the ball. So right there, a good job by Orange getting off the field and getting the ball back to the offense. Here's the punt by Luis Vidal, and it's a line drive to Wilson. Takes it on a dead heat at the 35. Escapes a tackle to the 40. Peyton runs near sideline, 45 to the 50. Look out here, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Dives for the corner of the end zone. Did he stay in? Touchdown, Orange. What a run by Peyton Wilson. He returned it 65 yards. He somehow stayed in bounds even though he was hit at the five as he was angling to the near sideline, and he wound up scoring. Yep. You can see a little bit of the Southern kind of losing their composure right there. I'm sure the Southern Spartan thought he stepped out of, out of bounds, but a great job by Wilson kind of almost going out of bounds oh. at the five-yard line and just goes airborne, reaches the ball out, hits the pylon oh. as the ball's come out of his hand. A great effort there. But the other thing to set it up too is, as a, as a special teams coach, you never like to see that low line drive kick because when you do that, you don't give your cover team a chance to get down the field. And that time the ball was kicked so low in on a line drive, all the Southern guys were bunched up in the middle. And as soon as Wilson made that first guy miss, oh. there was nobody on the sideline. A great job there by the special teams of Orange. There was one guy about the about the numbers, and he made that one seal block, and after that it was just he, being an athlete. You see the type of player that Peyton is making players miss. He's like a taller Kendall Hinton in a lot of ways. He's more muscular. He's like Kendall Hinton if he were a defensive player. And, you and know, now as a punt returner, keep in mind, Peyton didn't start doing this until this year. The original punt return man for Orange was Rodney Brooks. Now the officials have come over, and they're talking to Darius Robinson, the Southern coach. There was a personal foul called against Southern after that punt return for a score that will be from 65 yards. And the officials had a word of warning, it appears, for the Southern bench. Well, it's kind of like when they had Bryce. You know, if you've got an athlete who's that good, you put him at quarterback, you put him at running back, you put him at receiver, you put him to return punts. Right. You want the ball in his hands as many times as you can because he's going to make a play like that. Some of the other guys on your team, they're just not that athletic. But if you've got that great play like that, put the ball in his hands like him make plays. Francisco McKinley's extra point up, and it's good. <laughs> Officials apparently measuring by a sundial tonight on a 10-second delay, but they managed to signal the extra point is good, and we go to a break after an electrifying return, and now Orange is the team with the big lead against Southern. This is a change of pace. It is 21-7, to Orange with the lead on HillsboroughSports.com. Whatever you need, whenever you need it. That's what you'll find at Handy Andy's, located at 7136 Highway 57 in Caldwell. Serving their customers for 32 years, customers can look at a wide variety of merchandise, from quick snacks to grocery items, and there's even hardware. Sit back on a summer day and enjoy a cool drink and chat with some friends, and if you don't have any, then make some. Remember the name Handy Andy's. You'll find their stock complete and their service extra friendly. It's not your everyday convenience store. It's Handy Andy's, located at 7136. 36 Highway 57 in Caldwell. Because nothing explains the brutality and total war of high school football like the music of yes. That's what I always say. 21 to 7 after an electrifying run by Peyton Wilson on a punt return. Already his third punt return 
for a touchdown this year. He just started doing it on Labor Day against Riverside. He was inserted into the game as a punt returner, and in his first punt return, he returned one 45 yards against the Pirates. He had another one in the first touchdown of the game against Cummings two weeks ago tonight. Now McKinley is kicking from the 45. Orange with an onside kick. The ball is free. Did Orange recover it? Orange, I think, dove for it. Did he touch it too early? The referee to the far end of the field says it was touched at the 36. The ball has to go 10 yards, so they say that Orange didn't let it go 10 yards. It was recovered by a Panther, but it didn't go 10 yards. I was surprised Southern played that far back. And that was an interesting call. I was watching the you kicker looking over the orange sideline. We talked about the strategy of, of the pooch kick versus kicking it deep. And right there, I thought with the penalty, they might go, try to go ahead and drill it into the end zone. But when you got that much field position, if the ball goes 10 yards, you know, even if they do recover, the ball's on the 34, 35 yard line. So a great strategical play there by the orange staff to say, hey, let's just try to get the ball back. If we do, great. If we don't, they still get the ball where they normally would get it if we do our pooch kick. There was a Panther who got down on it, but he touched it at the 36. If he lets it go another two feet, it's orange ball. Green now with the handoff. Strong has room up the middle past the 40 over the 45, and he goes into the orange secondary, and a flag comes in late, thrown by the side judge. Strong doesn't look very happy. He's got the first down if the play stands. And, Jeff, looking at that, I think Marcus McDonald uh, for Southern Durham. He was kind of throwing his hands up looking at the official, which usually means that's probably a block in the back yep. or a hole by the receiver downfield. You called it, Coach, block in the back. That will take the ball back a little way. It's not the entire run, but a lot of it. As the ball was good, the run was good for 13 yards. The ball was ahead to the 49. The ball back now to the 39. So the run good by Strong for three yards, and it'll be first and seven from the 39. And I always told my receivers, I'll take a penalty or two like that. At least if you're trying to block downfield, yeah. I'll, I'll take that. Be aggressive, try to make some big plays. So it's first and seven after the holding penalty. Green hands it off. Strong again with room, but he's wrestled down quickly. That time it was Noah Rogers with the Bulldog. And he's ahead to the 43. That was Deron Buford, excuse me, on the run. So he gets four out of that. And I'll make it second and three. And the one thing you want to do defensively, that time Rodgers grabbed the ball carry and he kind of throws him down to the ground, but he throws him forward for about an extra two or three yards. You want to try to stop the running back where they are and either throw them down or wait for your teammates to come help you make the tackle. On second and three, handoff. It's strong, running around, and he's got the first down past the 45 and out to the 50. Devondre Moore comes over on the stop. That was Buford once again. So he has come in for Joey Strong. And it'll be a gain of six. And Southern has advanced it to midfield with Orange leading 21-7. to seven. This is a huge, huge drive for the Spartans right here. And if I'm Coach Robinson, I'm telling my offense coordinator, we're not going to throw the ball again. We're going to keep running this zone read until they stop it. And you've seen mm -hmm. Southern kind of come out and start, you know, running that zone read to force them to play. Because if you start doing that, Orange is going to start creeping up, as we talked about Southern doing on their defense, which is going to open up the passing lanes. And that's exactly what the linebackers are anticipating right now, just as you say that, Chris. And off, it was a pullback by Green running around to the left. Strong and Green were briefly in a tug of war. Green ran around oh, left and pursuit Green. cracked down quickly. Wilson made the tackle. Gain is out for three yards to the Orange 47. Green called his own number, and it'll be second and seven. And a lot of times with that, usually when you run your zone read, the quarterback's going to go to the side of the running back. So a lot of times if I was orange and I've got Wilson, I might just flip-flop him. I'm going to say, hey, whichever side the running back lines up on, I want you to be on mm -hmm. that side, and your job is to stop the quarterback. We'll take our other ten guys to stop the running back. You're man to man on that quarterback so we don't give up any more of those big plays. Peyton is the biggest threat trying to shut down, certainly, the zone read. Shotgun snap, rolls over to Green. Now he fumbles the ball, and he dives on it back, way back at the Southern 40. That play was just disaster from the get-go. A flag came in from the side judge. If this is an offside against Orange, it's going to be a huge, huge mistake against the Panthers here. Let's see what we have. Head official comes over. Richard Milner indicates an illegal shift against Southern. That penalty will be declined. And the Ross is all the way back to the Southern 41. And normally the Spartans' strength is their passing game. 
Uh, but when you got third and, you know, 25 or 30, they haven't been able to generate any passes downfield, any passes out no. in the flats. And I don't know if that's a credit to Orange's defense or that's a credit to Mother Nature not allowing them to be fast or they're just not as good as they've been the last couple of years on that perimeter with their receivers and their quarterback. Montreal Cooper is the top threat, but thus far it's been a silent vertical attack from Southern. Now third and 19 from their 41. Orange up 21 to 7, 520 remaining. And here's Green looking, meeting pressure, just throws it off in the flat. The pass is caught at the 45, but.